This is just me and you, not. You need words? I kind of need them too. I can't see Donald, though. I'll move. Oh, it's not you, it's Donald.
trying to stand up, step out when you call. Jesus, Jesus, we're gonna sing and shout and shake the wall. Won't stop until I see them fall. Gonna stand up, step out when you call. Jesus, give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my
Change to talk to Brother Mike. Brother Mike's been down and he's been sick, but I have talked to Brother Mike in the past. And this is one of the duties of a deacon is to be able to stand up and carry on when he needs. And this brother right here is always ready to help, to do his part, and to go beyond his part if he can do it. Uh, I don't know if you figured out who it is yet or not, but uh, I just want to tell you, I have a lot of confidence in you, and I just want you to give him your complete, undivided attention, not just him, but God, and allow God to, to speak through him. And it's a privilege to hear someone stand up and for the first time uh, deliver a message for the Lord. So uh, I thank you that came out here tonight. So if you ain't figured it out by now, we're going to ask Brother Richard Crawford. Come on up, brother. You know, God has a way of letting you know exactly what he wants. Uh, he'll give you confirmation on things. This morning, I didn't know Brother Roger was going to announce that we was going to have a special speaker tonight. Yeah, I am kind of special, but <laughs> not, not in the way that I would like to be. But I, I, I can honestly tell you tonight, it's not me that's speaking tonight. It never is. I'm just a vessel being used by God. And, and if, we ever, if we ever get it out of, our, out of our minds that it's us doing something and not God, then we're in the wrong place. We, we don't need to ever forget uh, 
that what we give comes straight from God. Now, those of you that were here on Wednesday night, y'all heard a little bit about what you're going to hear tonight, but I'm not going to be able to deliver the whole sermon tonight. <laughs> I'm going to have to give what God's given me to give. When that whole sermon comes out, this place is going to have to be fuller than what it is right now. Uh, we got a lot of people out sick. Uh, the message is for the church, and uh, there's many of them. There's many of them that we need to hear. But I prayed about what God would have me speak on tonight. And, you know, I thought I was going to go back to my Sunday school lesson and finish it. <laughs> Lord wouldn't let me do that. Well, we got something a lot similar, a lot similar to a lot that was uh, in that Sunday school lesson this morning. We're gonna have a good bit of scripture, but we're gonna try to read through the scripture and we're gonna try to break it down as God would have us to break it down tonight. I, I won't keep you past seven o'clock probably. So, everybody think we had choir practice? <laughs> no, but uh, I love singing. I really do. After about five or six songs, I'm pretty well spent. I cannot holler very long. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I do when I sing. I just kind of holler. So. Mm -mm. But if you have your Bibles with you tonight, and I certainly hope you do, I'd ask that you turn to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to be... Again, reading in verse 13. But also, if you want to get you a little bookmark, you can go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 12 and mark that because that's where we'll be going to next. You know, Paul's writings, he was always speaking to the churches. Uh, everywhere he went, he was going to correct issues within the church. I can tell you today, this afternoon, if you ever find the perfect church, don't go there. Mm -hmm. Sir, don't go there because you'll mess it up. Yeah. There's not a perfect church out there. That's right. uh, Paul's writings here is, is the Word of God. Uh, this Word we have is written by a man, but inspired, inspired by God. So understand, everything that's in this book comes from God tonight. God uses different vessels to bring across different messages. But if you're at Galatians 5 and 13, say amen or say amen. 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 We're going to begin reading in verse 13 of chapter 5. It says, For brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law was fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And verse 15 it says, But if, if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. And 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now I'm not going to go no further in Galatians at the moment. I want us to turn to Romans chapter 12. Understand what's being said here tonight. This is not Brother Richard up here giving me Brother Richard's opinion. This is the Word of God uh, by Apostle Paul. Get there in a minute. I thought I had it more. Romans chapter 12. We're going to begin reading in verse 1 and we're going to go to 16 if the Lord permits. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto which, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
and be not conformed, conformed to this world, but be you transformed, renewing your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah, that's the most important thing we need to understand tonight. What is the perfect will of God, not of man? He says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being made, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having the gifts of different, uh, have, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortion. <coughs> He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let the love be without this mutilation, uh, a whore that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Understand that. Cleave to that which is good. Now listen to this. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Now, this right here relates to my Sunday school lesson this morning. Not slothful in business. Fragrant in prayer, fervent in prayer, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. <clears throat> Bless and curse not. And rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but con condescended to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own consents. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you for allowing us to be here, Lord, to share your word, Lord. We're so thankful for those that are here tonight, Lord. Lord, the songs of praise that went up, Lord Father, is to glorify you tonight, Lord. Lord, it's our will that your will be done tonight, Lord. We pray that we will be exactly where you have us to be tonight, Lord. Lord, our prayer is tonight, if there is something wrong or indifferent in somebody's life tonight, Lord, that tonight may be the night that they take the opportunity, Lord, that your spirit will deal with that heart, Lord, Father, that they'll submit to you tonight. Lord, we ask again tonight, Lord, that you just use us as a mouthpiece. Lord, it's not for our glory, it's for your glory tonight, Lord. We're going to praise you and worship you in all that we do. For it's in your Son's precious and holy name that we do pray. Now, this is some good word tonight. Some good word tonight. You know, as a, this thing was talking about we're all one body. That's what we are in a church today. We should be one body. You know, these four walls are the building, but those of us that are sitting on these pews, that's our church. That's the church tonight. Uh, we've been leaning towards a message that God's going to bring. It's not going to happen tonight, but it's a message on unity. We need to be unified in the church. Uh, we talked about Wednesday night, you know, the proper way to go to a brother or a sister if there's something wrong in your, in, in your relationship with them, if they're doing something that you don't agree with, we talked about the proper way 
to address those things. You know, you can go about handling problems the wrong way and you can make the problem a lot bigger than what it really is. And I'm afraid sometimes that's what happens. Uh, I'm afraid too many times people want to carry their feelings around on their shoulders. And it'll take them just a little bit to knock them off because they're just barely sitting there. They're barely sitting there. But we learned that if we have an ought with our brother, we're to go to that brother. If there's a problem with someone, if I, if I, if I got an issue with Brother Wren, it's up to me to go to Brother Wren and try to work it out with Brother Wren. Right. And we went on a little further and we talked about well, if that didn't work, then I get another brother in Christ or two and take them with me and talk about what the issue is with Brother Wren. And then if you still can't get it resolved, guess what? We have a whole body, That's right. a whole body of Christ right here tonight that you bring this problem before. And there's a right way to do God's business. You know, you'll never do the right thing the wrong way. <laughs> you never will. You'll never do the wrong thing the right way. You have got to do it in the order that God uh, expects us to do it. <laughs> They was over in Galatians where we're, when we started at there in 5 and 13. If you read on in that chapter there, you'll see a big long list of things we should not be doing. It goes on to talk about whispers and backbiters and haters. And that's the right opposite of what we need to be doing. That's right. Now, I'm going to share this, but it didn't really bother me at all, but I'm going to share this just to give you a Prime example how fast things can get around. I didn't even make it to the house this morning. I, when we left church this morning, I didn't even make it to the house. I got a call from Brother Mike. I said, hey, you got a special speaker tonight. I said, yep. He said, who is it? I said, God. <laughs> you know what he said? I hear you, brother. <laughs> he said, I hear you, brother. There you go. And say, but you know, that could have been taken out of perspective. That's right. uh, Somebody could have been offended by that. But we don't need to be offenders one of another. If we do, we need to go to the one that offended us and tell them, look, this is what's bothering me. Can we work this out? Can we pray together. Find it in Scripture where God shows us where it's not right for us to have an off with our brother or our sister. I mean, it's just not right. I know I harp on this a lot, but I'm a true believer that if we do things in the order of God, we can't go wrong. Uh, he's got to be first. Right. If we do things in His order, we're not going to mess it up. But as we talked about over in Galatians, men get high mind yep. minded of their self. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, I got to go around the church tonight. <laughs> If you got that attitude, I pray that you just don't come. That's right. Or if you come, sit on the pew because you need this word. That's right. Our Sunday school lesson hit the nail on the head. We have too many babes in Christ mm -hmm. that need, they still need teaching when they should be teaching. That's right. They, they've been Christians long enough, they should be able to teach. I don't know if y'all realize it, we have an issue here at the church. It's hard to find Sunday school teachers. Faithful Sunday school teachers. It's a hard thing to find. Uh, if you take a position in the church, you need to take it seriously. Amen. Because uh, I'm going to tell you, God has called us into this ministry. And you might think to yourself, well, I'm not a preacher and I'm really not a teacher. But there's no reason why we cannot share the Word of God. Uh, these commentaries they give us to teach out of, they're pretty good. But let me recommend, stick with the Bible. Uh, some of these commentary writers, they're not always on target with what, with what the Word says. So uh, study that Word. Uh, they give us good scripture to lead us by. The, if you only got five or six scriptures out of a chapter, read that whole chapter. So you can get a full understanding of what that scripture is talking about. That way you'll be able 
to teach it or be able to comment on it. You never know when God's going to say, hey, I need you to teach a class this morning. <laughs> you never know. That's right. Uh, over in 2 Timothy, it tells us uh, we need to be ready, instant, in season and out of season. At all times, we need to be ready. Uh, a Christian needs to be prayed up and studied up because you never know what God might ask you to do. You never know. And if you don't know what to teach, you can't teach it. And I pray this, this, night, this evening that uh, everyone knows if you know how you got saved, you should be able to tell somebody else how to get saved. Right. That's a very important fact. I harp on that a lot too, but too many times we have Christians that come in and when well, I'm saved and I'm good, it's covered under the blood, don't matter what I do, it's covered. No. You have to work at it. You have to make an effort. If you want to grow spiritually, as we talked about in Sunday school this morning, if you want to grow spiritually, then then you have to do something. You have to get in God's word. You have to pray. You have to study and get in God's Word. <laughs> it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we should be praying for tonight, is that perfect will of God. Because God's never going to give us anything bad. It's not going to do anything to hurt us. His aim is that we all have what we need. It's not His desire that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge and the truth of the gospel. So, when we pray, we don't need to pray selfishly, but we need to pray that we'll be in that good and acceptable perfect will of God. You know, if God don't accept what we're doing, He's not going to bless it. That's right. He's not going to bless it. Uh, he said there will not be a cursing and a blessing coming from the same mouth. Right. You can't do it. You cannot straddle the fence. Either you're in or you're out. And there, there's no two ways about it. You're either in or you're out. Uh, it says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. <laughs> Boy, we have a lot of that yeah. in churches today, especially pastors of these big churches. They feel like they have done something great in that church to make that church to grow the way it has. Uh, Brother Roger said this morning in his message, if you put your faith in man, I promise you man will always let you down. That's right. God will never let us down. He'll never make a promise to us that he, he don't intend to keep. Uh, sometimes we make promises that we have to back up on, and we have to go to that person and say, look, bro, I really wanted to do that today, but I couldn't get there. You know, God's never going to tell us that. His promises stand forever. Stand forever. He's the one that we can count on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Soberly. Think soberly. Now, when you hear this word soberly, you think, well, he must be drinking or something. That's not what this means in this scripture here. We've got to think with a level head. We've got to know that what we're getting is coming from the one and only true God. And God, he will confirm it with you. If, you haven't, if you're not sure that that's what God wants you to do, he'll make it known to you. But if he wants you to do it, he'll also make it known to you. He's not going to send you out there to do a job that he hadn't equipped you to do it with. But the only way we can be equipped is we got to be in this right here. Right. we got to be in this word. Amen. We can never think that we can do something on our own. If That's we right. do, we're going to fall flat on our face every Amen. time. We have got to understand that it's Jesus Christ, it's through Jesus and God leading us is the only way because it's God to God be the glory, Amen. not man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> not man. Amen. Uh, as much as we love our pastors, not to Brother Mike be the glory, it's to God be Amen. the glory. That's right. uh, and Brother Mike is picky 
about who he puts behind this pulpit, I can tell you that now. He's very picky, and I'm glad he's that way. I'm glad he's that way because we'll go back to those babes that's still on milk this morning. If we don't recognize it when it comes in that door, it'll slip right in here on us. Satan will be in here so fast, he'll rip this place apart. But if we're prayed up and studied up and we're on the meat, and we can recognize God give us the discernment. He give us a discernment about the spirit of the people. Not that we have a right to judge, but he said we could tell the tree by the fruit it bears. We'll know it when it comes through that door back there. You know, God can change the message in the middle of the message. Oh, yes. You might have something prepared to share, and you may have five pages of notes. <laughs> You might not get to use that first note. <laughs> Some people say wing it. No, I don't wing it. I trust in God. I let Him lead. Let Him guide. Yes, we all have to jot things down because our memory is not what it used to be. But the Lord said He would bring this scripture back to us in time when we need it. If we read it for ourselves, He'll bring it back to us when we need it. He's not going. He said, "Never leave us." Don't forsake us. He's not going to throw us out to the wolves and not provide some protection. This right here is our protection from the wolves. It's our protection from Satan tonight. And I hope tonight that we understand that it's not anything that man can do. It's the Word of God that does it all. The Word of God does the convicting. The Word of God does the saving. You know Brother Roger can't save you? <laughs> Brother Tommy can't save you. But he can tell you how he got saved. It's only by the Spirit of God. It's only God that can do these things. So, we as many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Ain't you glad, ain't you glad God made us all different? Yep. It would be a boring world if we was all the same. I mean, it wouldn't be much conversation. If we was all in total agreement on everything all the time, it'd be a boring world. But, you know, it's okay to disagree with somebody, but there's a right way to do it. There's a right way to go to that person and say, hey, brother, I just don't quite understand this. Could you help me with it? And that fat brother back it up with scripture, I've got no problem with it. But if it's just coming from him and him alone, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear some scripture. To, to back it up. <laughs> so, having then gifts differ, differ, differing according to the grace that is given to us, whatever your gift may be, you know, if you don't use the gifts that God gives you, He could take those gifts from you. That's right. He could take those gifts from you. Y'all, believe it or not, I used to know how to play a guitar. I didn't use it for God. In my young years. So God restricted me on what I can do on that thing. But now I do it for Him and only Him. So whatever He wants me to do with it, that's what I'll do. But when I was young, it was all about me. Hey, look what I can do. I can play Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> now, I want to play Oh How I Love Jesus. Now, uh, praise God, He come in and He changed me from the inside out. Like that song the brother was talking about, the old man's dead. I may look the same on the outside. I may wear the same old clothes. But on the inside, I'm a different man. Amen. And that's yeah. where we have to be. We've got to be that different man. <laughs> Praise God, he made us all different. I'd hate to be looking out across this audience and see 25 brother wrens out here. No. <laughs> I think I'd probably go home and have a nightmare <laughs> No. If you ever do, you probably will be having a nightmare. I know I can pick on Brother Wren because he's not going to take it the wrong way. Brother Wren has always come to me with anything that's ever bothered him, and we've handled it the right way. And that's the way it should be with every one of us in this church. Right. If there's something that, that's not right, hey, let's get every member that it consists of and let's sit down and let's talk it out and let's back it up with Scripture. I promise you, if we handle it the right way, 
we'll get this broken unity out of here and get reunified in this church. You know, we were talking about revival in this church. If we don't get unified together here, we'll never see revival here. Right. Revival's got to start right here in our heart. It's got to start right here in our heart. <laughs> Key word, love. Mm -hmm. Brother brought it out this morning. Love is charity. Yes, if you really love somebody, you're willing to do whatever it takes. You're willing to do help them in whatever way they need help. Now, this church has been blessed. We, we support three missions here. This church has been blessed. We built a couple of rooms on this church. We don't owe any bank any money. This church has been blessed. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of churches that can't say that. Uh, we don't have a full membership like we used to have. The Lord said there'd be a great falling away, and we can see it every day. In every church that you go to, you can see a great falling away. I had an opportunity to go over to that same last night for a little while. I felt bad because I didn't know what time it started. So last time I went there, they started at 7. But they actually started at 5.30. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I only got about an hour, 15 minutes out of that singing. But it was a sad situation. There were no more people in that church last night than there are in this church tonight. Lord said they'd be a great falling away. So we must cling to one another here. You know your strength is right here in numbers. Your strength is right here. If you can't get something right with your brother, then your strength is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh, when I say brothers and men, I'm talking about men and women. Right. If there's an issue, we have to iron it out. Uh, if there's an issue with one sister with another sister, then that sister should take a sister with her and, and iron that thing out. It works the same way. If two or more can't get it going, then we bring it before the church. we got to get the problem out of the church. That's right. yeah. The problem's got to leave the church. It's quenching the spirit. It's quenching the spirit in the church. There's a problem here. Well, we've got to get it going. We've got to get it going. And they are lucky. Uh, God's not going to let me bring this entire message tonight. <laughs> Y'all very lucky, or we would be here till about 7.30. Mm -hmm. But I know uh, a lot of us have to work tomorrow. Some of us don't. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, let's do what God told us to do. Pray you one for another. Be there one for another. If a brother has an issue, let's work it out the way God would have us to work it out. Same way with sisters. If there's a problem in the church, let's handle it the right way. I, and I use this example all the time because it is God's order. God must be first. Your spouse is second. Then your children. And I know that's hard sometimes to put your children before anything. But God's got to be first and then your spouse, and then your children. If we don't get them three things right, we're never going to get the rest of it right. If we don't go to that brother we have an ought with and talk it out with him, we're never going to get it right. Uh, you'll never solve a problem by avoiding it. you got to face that problem head on. So tonight, my prayer is, I, I hope there's something that was shared here tonight that would, would help someone and, and maybe encourage someone to go back and read these chapters. Read, read Galatians 5th chapter. Read that whole chapter. You'll see there's a lot in there. It talks about what causes these problems in the church. Paul was like a, to me, he'd be like a truant officer. He'd go around correcting wrong that's in the church. We need to be more like Paul. We need to be Sharing the word and going by what God's word says and correcting the wrong that's in the church. If we don't get our issues ironed out together, we're never going to see revival right here at Piper Town Baptist Church. Good. And we need revival. Amen. We need revival. Mm -hmm. It needs to start right here, though. Right. It needs to start right here in our heart. Uh, that's pretty much all I have tonight, but I never want to never want to leave church without offering an altar call because 
You know, God knows who exactly was going to be here tonight, and He knew who would be. So He knew what word needed to be brought tonight. That's why He hadn't allowed me to do the complete message on this series I'm working on. I need every member we have in this church that can be here. I need them. I need them here to hear this message. Because we got to do it. We got to look out for one another. We're, we're not in this thing by ourselves. Number one, we got God which will help us through everything. But we got brothers and sisters in Christ that we can actually count on. I don't know about y'all, but I've never experienced the love of God like I have right here in this church right here. When there was need in my family, this church right here steps up. That's the love of God. That's that love for one another that he's speaking of that we need to have for each other. So just because somebody makes a mistake or don't do something exactly the way we think they ought to do it, hey, maybe we're the one with the problem. <laughs> maybe we're the one with the problem. So we need to check up on ourselves. Uh, Wednesday night I talked about judge not lest you be judged. <laughs> In what measure you judge? That same that might be met to you. You know, that's the last thing we need to be doing is judging our brothers and sisters. Uh, there's only one judge, and his judgment's going to be final. When we stand before him, his judgment's going to be final. So I, I never want to leave God's house without an invitation. And don't get me wrong, I, I love singing. I love music. I love singing for the Lord. But I, I, in my heart of hearts, we should never come into God's house without sharing some kind of word. We should always have a word for God. We need to be, as Paul was teaching Timothy, we need to be ready at all times. Not just Timothy. He, he, got, he went to all the churches. You know, I wish Paul could come in here and speak to this church, boy. What did he say? Ain't no telling what he would say. But I guarantee you it'd be from God. And that's, that's our mission today is to bring what God would have us to bring bring unity in this church again because I'm missing it. There's a lot of people missing out on what they really need just because some little something is not sitting right with them that can, that can be settled, it can be fixed within this body. You know, if, if it's bad enough, we'll get rid of the problem altogether. That's what the Word says, do if, if they don't, they don't want to listen to the church. Get them out of the church. That's <laughs> what the word said to do. So I love all of you tonight. And um, we're going to just sing a cappella, Amazing Grace. I don't know. I think it's on page 159 or something like that in this book. The Lord finds it first on that page. So. 37. 37. Don't sing it on the pillow. <laughs> and I want to hear you sing it, but tonight, if the Lord's dealing with your heart, this is the time to come and get it right. Even after we finish the service, if you have something on your heart, you can talk to somebody about I'll be glad to stay and talk with you. I know there's some more men in this church. There's some women in this church. Be glad to talk and pray with you. And let's all get in one mind and one accord. Let's all get on the same page. And that page is we've got to be serving God together, loving one another, looking out for one another, not looking at what somebody's doing wrong all the time. Correct the problem. Correct the wrong. We can do it. If we do it in the right way. Oh, man. 